do now indeed baptize thee in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost.
If you love the Lord, give him some more praise today. Amen. We thank him for his goodness. We thank him for his grace. And we definitely thank him for his mercy. It's because of his tender mercies. Amen. That we're able to be here on this blessed Lord's day. Amen. Again, if you love him, give him some more praise. Amen. And we are grateful to be here on today and to celebrate the coming to the faith of our brother, Brother Cameron Moore. Amen. And we thank the Lord that he has cast his lots with Christ and that he has decided to unite with us in our membership. So let's continue to keep him lifted in our prayers. Amen. And Amen, amen, amen. Let us give our praise team and music ministry a hand today. Thank you all. God bless you. Amen. And we're also grateful to our hospitality ministry, deacons ministry, and especially our audio video ministry for all of the things that you do week after week. Uh, they were able to provide this worship experience both to those of us in person and to those who are worshiping with us virtually. So to our virtual audience, we also greet you this blessed Lord's day. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. We want to say a special thank you to uh, Brother uh, Wells, Reverend Wells, for holding down the fort on last Sunday. And give him a hand. Thank God for him. Praise the Lord for all of our ministers who um, bless this servant and um, co-labors with me to provide ministry to this great congregation. Amen. Amen. This is also our scholarship Sunday. Amen. So we'll be asking as you depart here on today to please remember to uh, leave a special love offering for our uh, scholarship fund as we continue to be a blessing to our uh, college-bound students and students who are already in college. We thank God for you. And so we uh, will take a moment to recognize them at the end of worship here on today. So let's give our college students a hand today. I think I see one of them here, Sister Haven. Good morning. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Second Kings chapter 13. Verses 20 and 21. Amen. We're going to hang out today with an interesting couple of verses. Amen. That's nestled away in this 13th chapter of 2 Kings. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. One, also as you're making your way to that particular passage of scripture, either on, in your Bibles or on your electronic device, uh, be mindful that on next Sunday is our uh, Eastern Kentucky Disaster Relief Sunday. So we ask if you would please bring a special love offering on next Sunday as well, as we look to be a blessing to those who were impacted by the floods there in Eastern Kentucky. Amen. Uh, we were a blessing to uh, Western Kentucky tornado victims, amen, we're going to do the same thing for our Eastern Kentucky neighbors, and we are working with uh, persons in that area who we will be look to um, partner with in distributing those funds that we're collecting, and we'll be doing that through our state association, General Association of Baptists in Kentucky, as I serve as the East Region moderator, we'll be spearheading that effort. So, again, we, we welcome your uh, special love gift on next Sunday as we do what we can to be a blessing to those uh, who are still being impacted by uh, the flood. Amen. Second Kings chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. If you have it in your Bible or your electronic device and you're ready to go, say amen. amen. The word of God says, then Elisha died. Uh, and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was, as they were burying a man, that suddenly they spied a band of raiders. 
and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Amen. Allow me to tack this text this morning with the subject, the show must go on. Amen. The show must go on. Uh, this idiom, the show must go on, uh, is familiar to many of us. It is rumored that this particular saying originated in the late 1800s in the arena of circuses. Uh, it is believed by many that uh, during the course of a circus, if someone was injured while attempting a death-defying trick, or if an animal broke loose, the ringmaster and the band would uh, step forth and carry on the show as a way of trying to keep the calm among the crowd and to keep those in attendance from panicking. It is believed that when something tragic would happen, amen, so therefore it's the idea that the ringleader in the band would step forth and keep the show going on. Henceforth, it is rumored that uh, as that practice continued, that uh, when something again would happen during the course of a show, the ringleader would step before the crowd and literally say, the show must go on. Uh, that phrase, amen, uh, began to be used because of its popularity and the meaning behind it in the arena of show business. So in the area of the theater and live performances, amen, if something was to occur before the show began, someone would step forth and encourage the cast and let them know in spite of the disruption, in spite of the dis disappointment, despite of what is going on, the show must go on. And I want to encourage somebody here this morning that you may be dealing with some ordeal. You may be dealing with some level of disappointment, but I stop by to tell you that the show must go on. And as a matter of fact, that's really how these two interesting verses, in verses 20 and 21 of 2 Kings chapter 13, functions in its narrative context. But in this context, amen, uh, we're greeted in verse 20 with the words that Elisha, the prophet, had died. And there was bad news to the sitting king on the throne by the name of Joash or Jehoash. And Jehoash was worried. Joash was worried that if Elisha dies, then the show might not go on. He was worried that if the prophet Elisha died, uh, that, that things would not go so well for the northern kingdom. But uh, God, in an attempt to encourage Joash, stuck this event right in our text to let Joash know that even though Elisha has died, the show can and must go on. My brothers and my sisters, we are unable to control all of the avenues and events of life, but sometimes, amen, even when things happen, amen, we got to still just believe that God will be there and that the show can and must go on. And my brothers and sisters, here we are on today, amen, and, 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 and as we move forward, this particular text was an answer to some of my prayers. As I began to pray and ask God for continued guidance and direction, the Lord directed me to 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 and 21, and said, more, the show must go on. As we are greeted with this text, this morning, step down into it, it encourages me because the narrative says that Elisha died and they buried him and the raiding bands of Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. And as I read that text, it took me back to the spring of 2020. It took me back to the spring of 2020 when an invasion invaded our land. Y'all know what that invasion was. It was that virus called COVID-19. 
And when you look at the text, it seems as if the invasion of the marauding or the raiding bands, amen, altered life as Israel was living it in verses 20 and 21. I identified with that because the invasion of the coronavirus changed some things. It changed the way we lived our lives. It changed the way we went about our daily activities. COVID-19 invaded and it interrupted some things. I don't know about you, but I'm not suffering from a short memory this morning. I still remember the impact of the invasion. And here we are two and a half years later and we're still dealing with the invasion of COVID-19 and all of its variants and henchments. But as I look at the text, in spite of the invasion, I see that God was still working. Amen. I see that in the invasion, God was still helping the show to go on. Can I tell you how I see it? I see it in the mere fact that in, they invaded in verse 20, but in verse 21, I see God in eight Enabling the continuation of life even in the midst of a pandemic or even in the midst of an invasion. I see it right here. I see it right here. For, for, for the text says in verse 20 that the raiding bands of the Moabites invaded the land. Verse 21, so it was as they were burying a man. We can stop right there. Because right there, that tells me that even though there was an invasion in the land, God was continuing life to go on. Amen. Because the text says that they were burying a man. Truth be told, amen. Uh, burying and dying is just a part, honestly, of everyday life. It's a part of day-to-day -day activities. Each day you look in your newspaper, if you still read it, you'll still see an obituary column. Amen. It might not be your family. It may be somebody else's family today, somebody else's family tomorrow, then your family the next day. But the truth of the matter is, amen, that, 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 that part of living this experience called life is a dynamic called death. They were burying the man. That, that even though when you look at it, it appears as if the uh, burial service was an abbreviated service because of the invasion of the raiding bands, amen. But at least they were still able to do some burying, amen. At least they were still able to do some level of day-to-day -day activities. I'm just trying to encourage us this morning and give us a cause to pause and praise God because even when the invasion came in, God still allowed us to continue with day-to-day -day activities. Things may have been different. Things may have changed. Things may have been impacted. But praise be to God, life didn't stop. Amen. Life didn't come to a complete halt. Yes, we had to slow down. Yes, we had to mask up. Yes, we had to social distance. Yes, we had to curtail our services. Yes, we couldn't go like we wanted to go. Yes, we had to deal with escalating numbers. Yes, we still had to deal with death told yes we still had to deal with other dynamics but in spite of everything we had to deal with God kept life going on and even in that it challenges us as children of God of those of us who have a connection with God when other people see negativity you got to see some positivity in the text somebody sees burying but when I see burying I still see life because you cannot have a burial if there is no life. You cannot have a funeral if there is not some life. You cannot have this dynamic if there is no life. Every now and then the child of God must be able to look at situations and declare, I know what it looks like, but there's still a silver lining somewhere. Just when you look at a glass and if it's half filled up, you ought to see it half full, not half empty. When you see death, you ought to be able to see life because God is a God that keeps life going on God in the midst of the invasion was still allowing the continuation of life they were still continuing though adjusted though different they were still continuing some day to day activities I thank God that through the invasion, 
God still enabled life to go on. Have I got a witness? I got at least a few parents in the house or even virtually who can testify even while you had to go through those days of homeschooling, you glad that they back in school right now. God <laughs> kept the continuation uh, of life going on. They were able, maybe different, but yet God enabled life to go on. So I see in the text, amen, amen, the mere fact that God kept the show going on, even when the invasion in the spring of the year occurred. Uh, they, 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 they were still enabled to, 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 to funeralize or they were able to go on with some of the activities that's connected with day-to-day -day living. And might I suggest today, amen, we ought to thank God that God still allowed some things to carry on even in the midst of the invasion, such as even the burying of our loved ones. Amen. Uh, not everybody made it through COVID-19. Amen. Not everybody, some, there's still some people that have to deal with death in their families. And even though they may not have been able to celebrate their homegoings like they normally would have, thank God there was at least able to be some homegoing celebrations. Amen. That's why we give thanks to a unity worship center who's able who open up their doors while some of our churches still had our doors closed. Thank God to a Mario Rapid and a Growth Point Church who was able allowed us to have services in their facilities while they were going on. I thank God for the little things that God did to help life go on even during the midst of an invasion. Don't 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 get short term memory. We're not that far removed. And to be told, we, 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 we're only a, maybe a day or so from another variant coming around that may take us back to where we are. So we ought to appreciate what the Lord has done with the continuation of life. I, I like that. And in burying, like I said, you got to see life, amen, uh, uh, because uh, that, that, that's what encourages us as children of God because we know that death is not the end, amen. So that's why when we celebrate uh, our loved ones, we, we don't celebrate the death. We celebrate the life. We celebrate the life of the individual and the life that the loved one is now going to experience in Christ because in Christ, there's life. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but in the midst of this barrier, I can't, I see life as well because this text takes place in 2 Kings chapter 13. Amen. There's the burying of a man. But I'm also aware when I continue to read my Bible, there's also a 2 Kings 14. There's a 2 Kings 15. <laughs> there's a 2 Kings 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Book ends. First Chronicles, Second Chronicles covers the whole same time period, really, as First and Second Kings. Then I pick up with Ezra and Nehemiah. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that spans some 300 plus years. Which tells me that, that, that the show didn't stop in 2 Kings 13 with the burying of a man. Because it tells me that if there was life in chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, there wasn't just some burying going on during the invasion. <laughs> There was also some birthing going on during the invasion. <laughs> and that's what I like about God, that even in the midst of troubling times, God can still bring life in tough situations. There might have been some barriers, but there was so some birthing. Amen. There was still God still working to bring life even in the midst of the invasion. And somebody will praise God right there, right now, because you experienced some new things in the midst of your season of invasion. I was reminded on last week I was out because of the mere fact that I got a chance to go home, amen, or go back and visit our couple children, amen, and see some new additions to the family. And it dawned 
dawned on me. Well, he said, more you ought to really praise God for what God has done for your family because you experienced three of your four new births into the family during the midst of a pandemic. Don't tell me what God can't do in the season of invasion. So no matter what's going on in your life, trust God because the show still can go on. So in the text, I see the continuation of life in spite of an invasion. We ought to continue to praise God that God has seen us through this portion of the invasion. And he is continuing to help life roll on in spite of the invasion. Now do I see, um, uh, again, this dynamic of the continuation of life uh, during the invasion. But I see uh, compassion on display in spite of the invasion. I I see compassion uh, lurking around in the text. I see compassion because to have compassion means more than just to feel sorry for somebody. To have compassion for somebody means to get down into the situation with someone and walk beside them to help them to deal with their ordeal. As some of our families have experienced, it's one thing to have to endure the invasion, but then to have to deal with the passing of a loved one, even during the invasion, adds uh, a little bit more of a challenge to handling the passing of a loved one. Uh, uh, That's where I see the compassion in the text because uh, uh, it it, it says in verse 21 that uh, it was as they, 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 as they were burying a man, they suddenly, uh, they spied a band of raiders and, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. When the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. I, I, see, the, 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 I see compassion there because uh, that, that, that the scholars are, are divided to some degree on who the they crowd was in the text. Some suggest that they were mourners of the man, a man uh, who, who was making their way to the final place of internment and saw a raiding band and saw that their life was in danger so therefore uh, they, they put the man in the tomb of Elijah and putting the man in the tomb of Elijah the man touched the bones of Elijah and received his life again but then the broader consensus believed that this band because of the uh, effects and being on the watch out for uh, the raiding bands that necessarily believe that this was a full blown funeral procession. Uh, they believe that for it to be a full blown fun- funeral procession may not have been practical because uh, they, 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 were, they were looking at the cur- look at what the, they did. They, they were looking to avoid the Moabite raiding bands. See, the Moabite raiding bands were dangerous because if they caught you, they would rob you and could perhaps kill you. Or if you talk to the slave girl in 2 Kings chapter number 5, uh, featuring that story of that uh, Syrian commander in chief by the name of Naaman who was healed of his leprosy. The only way he was healed of his leprosy is because the Syrian raiding bands invaded the land of Israel and took the girl captive back to Syria. So raiding bands could mean the loss of possession. Raiding bands could mean the loss of life or the raiding bands could mean the loss of your freedom. So therefore, raiding bands were not a good sight. So much so is that the King James and the New King James really doesn't let us see uh, the depths of the challenge of what they were doing in the text. So therefore, I believe, like others seem to suggest, that these men were pallbearers. That they were individuals who were carrying out on behalf of the family uh, the act of 
finalizing the burial, amen, and, 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 and while they were on their way to the final place of interment, the Bible says that they spied or they spotted or they saw, all of a sudden, they saw danger, amen. And the Bible says, and they put the man, but that's not a real good translation for the word, Hebrew word for put in the text uh, literally means uh, to throw, cast, or fling. Uh, it's the idea that when they saw the bands, uh, they, they, were in, they were so fearful of their lives, of what could possibly happen, that they cut the funeral procession short. Did not make their way to the final place where the man was supposed to be buried and buried the man in the nearest grave available, which was the tomb of Elisha. That tells me that there was some danger involved in the text. And anybody that is willing to put their life on the line to minister some, to somebody during times of trouble, that is an act of compassion. You may be sitting there this morning and say, well, Reverend, that, don't sound, that doesn't sound too compassionate if they just flung the man in the nearest grave. But might I suggest it, it, it's an act of compassion, but at least they were out there in the first place. I just want to say we ought to thank God for those who had compassion to still do ministry in the midst of an invasion. They put their lives on the line just to be a blessing to somebody else. Ah, that's why we thank God for nurses and doctors. Have I got a witness? Some of them doing ministry without all of the proper equipment, but they still had compassion and ministered to individuals. They, to thank God for first responders who continued to do their job in the midst of an invasion. And thank God even for law enforcement, even though they had to deal with some challenging times during the invasion, amen, they still put their lives on the line to provide services to people. Thank God for people of compassion. These men, this day crowd, Ah, amen, risk their lives in order to bury this man. Ah, they, 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 they saw the danger and they had to flee real quick, but at least they were out there doing what they could to be a blessing to the man. That's why I thank God not only during this time of, uh, for, for those who are part of the general service sector, but I thank God for the members of this church who stepped up and showed compassion even in the midst of the invasion. Kept on being a blessing to seniors in the senior feeding program. Kept on handing out meals through Matthew's place. Masked up and all, praise God. Thank God for individuals in the church who still stepped up and helped out and continued to pray and do what you could to help things going on, keep going on. I thank God for people of compassion. They show compassion in the midst of the invasion. Uh, at the risk of their own lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At the risk of Losing their freedom at the risk of losing their possessions, at the risk of losing their lives, they still provide a service to this family. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for folk, amen, who are willing to do whatever it takes to be a blessing to individuals. Many of us are, are here this morning because somebody disregarded their own safety and welfare to be a blessing to you. Do I have a witness today? Thank God for folk who are willing to show compassion. They show compassion in the midst of the invasion. And the last thing, there's one other thing I see in the text. Not only do I see, amen, the continuation of life, though adjusted, though different, I still see the continuation of life in spite of an invasion. I, I see compassion on display in spite of the invasion. But I also see the reactivation of life during an ongoing invasion. Here it is. The invasion was underway. Verse 20. Elisha died 
and they buried him. Then in the springtime of the year, the Moab raiding bands invaded the land. During the time of their invasion period, a man died. A man was buried. He was put in the grave of the prophet Elisha. And the text says, amen, let me paraphrase that, 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 that as soon as his bones or his body touched the bones of Elisha, text says he received life again. <laughs> amen. Uh, Elisha died. He was buried. The raiding bands invaded the land in the springtime of the year. During the invasion, a man died, was buried, touched the bones of Elisha, and he received life all over again. Verse 21 says, and he revived and stood on his feet. Brothers and sisters, to me, that is the reactivation of life during an ongoing invasion. As I prayed and asked the Lord for direction, the Lord said, well, more, uh, uh, I was looking to him for some things. I said, God, that there are some things that we, we, we put a halt to. There were some things that the springtime invasion called us to bring to a stop. There were some things that we had to set aside. Ministries we had uh, to shut down. Different things of church life we had to pull back on. I said, Lord, I'm wondering when, when, when is the time? Uh, because it doesn't look like the invasion is going anywhere. It looks like the invasion will stay around. He said, well, more, I'm giving you the answer. It's right here in verse number 21. In the midst of an ongoing invasion, it's time to reactivate some life. It's time, amen, to reactivate some areas of church life. It's time to reactivate ministries that you shut down. It's time to reactivate, amen, even in the midst of an ongoing invasion because the same God that's been taking care of you during the invasion will keep on taking care of you. You did what you had to do to make it through, but now it's time to reactivate. <laughs> That's the reason why starting in the month of September, you'll begin to see Project Reactivation launched. Well, we will go about trying to, in a systematic and methodical way according to the dictates of the Holy Ghost. We will begin to reactivate areas of ministry in our church family. And I thank God today. We serve a God that is able to reactivate life even during an ongoing invasion. Anybody glad to know you serve a God that is able to bring reactivation? Good morning. Amen. Ah, it's time to go and get brunch. But I just wanted to stop by to tell you it's time to reactivate. But I need to, this is where I need to close though this morning because uh, uh, I know the Lord has said that the show must go on. <laughs> Uh, but there is somebody under the sound of my voice in the sanctuary or even in our virtual space, you have some questions about whether or not the show really can still go on. You're worried whether or not your show can still go on. You're dealing with some personal trials and you're dealing with some personal situations and you want to know, can the show really go on? And I just want to let you know, my brother and my sisters, yes, the show still can go on. Because remember, I told you at the start of my sermonic presentation uh, that these two verses uh, were nestled in here in 2 Kings chapter number 13. And uh, they were nestled here for a particular reason. Um, remember, I told you about a king by the name of 
Joash, a.k.a. Jehoahash. Yeah, Jehoash had just mounted the throne of Israel and his father had left him with a decimated military. But they didn't only have to deal with the raiding bands of the Moabites. They had to deal with the oppression of the nation of Syria. And Jehoahash visited Elisha before Elisha died uh, and Elisha promised him uh, that God would uh, give him power uh, to do battle against the Syrians uh, but Joash uh, had some doubts in his mind uh, he had some doubts as uh, to whether God uh, could do uh, what Elisha said God could do uh, Joash had some doubts uh, as to whether or not uh, God would come through for him uh, because him and God weren't on the best of terms uh, he had some doubts Doubts uh, as to whether God uh, would come through for him uh, because he didn't have uh, all of the resources. Uh, and if that's your situation, uh, if that's where you are, uh, then your name is Joash this morning. Uh, you've got some doubts, uh, you've got some fears, uh, you have some apprehensions uh, whether the show can go on. Uh, but I just want you to know. Uh, you can make it through and God can see you through the show can go on you fast forward to the end of the chapter and the same Joash that had doubts in chapter 13 14 through 19 steps to the plate and was able to do what God said he would be able to do he was able to do what he Elisha prophesied uh, he was able to do uh, in spite of his doubts uh, he was able to do uh, in spite of his fears uh, I'm so glad uh, that in spite of my doubts uh, my God can still come through for me uh, in spite of my fears uh, he can still help me build my faith uh, is there anybody in here uh, that can testify this morning you had some doubts uh, but God God came through you had some fears but God made a way and I know Joash had doubts but I kept on looking kept on reading the story and I wanted to know Joash how were you able to overcome your doubts how were you able to overcome your fears Joash says this is my simple testimony I heard of a story according to 2 Kings chapter 13, 20 and 21. I heard that a man died and I heard that a man was buried and then I heard that same man received his life again. Can I say it one more time? Joash, where did you get your faith? Joash, how did you overcome your doubts? Joash says, I heard a story about a man who died and was buried and then received his life back again. Joash, are you sure? He said, yes, because God was reaching out to me in the story of 20 and 21 because Elijah made me a promise before he died. I had some doubts and I had some fears but I thank God today that God allowed a man to die be buried and come to life again to give me hope to give me courage I heard the story about this man that was buried in the tomb of Elisha and as soon as he touched Elisha's bones the man received his life again he said this is my story I knew the power of new life did not come from the dead man. It came from the God who was working through the man that was now dead. I believe 
believed and not Elisha, but I believed in what his name means. The name Elisha in translation means my God says my faith was not in the man of God, but my faith was in the God of the man. My faith was in the God of the prophet Elisha. And if my God through touching a dead man's bones can give life to a dead man, I know, I said I know what God can do. If God can bring life to a dead man, I know God can bring life to my situation. I know if my God can bring life to a dead man that was buried, I think y'all know where I'm going here. If God could bring life to a dead man that was buried, I know the show can go on. Good afternoon, let's get out of here. You can make it, the show can go on. Can I tell you how I know? I know because of a story of a man who died, was buried, and received life again. You can go on. I feel all right now. You can make it. Yes, you can. Because of a story of a man who died and was buried and received life again. You, you can go on this morning because a man by the name of Jesus died on a hill called Calvary. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there for three days. Good God Almighty, but early Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead. Ain't God all right? If God can raise a man that was died, a man that was buried and now is alive, God can see you through. Anybody glad about it? Because Jesus lives, the show can go on. Because Jesus lived, you can make it. Anybody glad? If you're glad today, tell God thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you for continuing life. Thank you for compassionate souls. But most of all, thank you. You are a God of reactivation. You're the God of restoration. If you're glad, say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Believe the story. Believe the story. <laughs> he died, buried, rose again. The same God that raised Jesus, he's still raising folk. He's still empowering folk. If you're glad about it, say yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, project reactivation and as you reflect on today's sermonic presentations the Lord also issued a personal challenge to us as well as he reactivates life in our church he also has the challenge and wants you to in person and virtual have an honest conversation with God and see what is it that God needs to reactivate in your life. There are some things that some of us stop doing because of the invasion. There, 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 there are some things that we were not able to do because of the invasion. But ask God, what is it that you need him to reactivate in your life going forward during this ongoing invasion? Maybe your prayer life slipped off during the invasion. 
and you're not as diligent in your prayer life as you used to be, what? Maybe that's something God needs to reactivate. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe your worship attendance needs to be reactivated. Amen. Many folk are going everywhere. Doing what they want to do. But 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 still apprehensive about church. Uh, I've been I've been I've been going out just like y'all have. And I'm convinced one of the safest places is church. At least At least in church, when I'm walking by somebody, they got a mask on like I do. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just asking, I'm being real with it. What, 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 what do you need to have reactivated? Is it my participation in areas of ministry that I, I've slacked off on? Ask God, what, 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 what do you need to be prayerful about that he reactivates in your life? as we enter into the season of reactivation, becoming active again for the sake of kingdom building and fruit bearing. The show must go on. God bless you, amen. We want to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, there may be someone here who has not accepted Christ. There is new life in Christ. God sent uh, his son so that life could, could, could go on. In him there is life and life more abundantly. In him there is new life. You find life in him. If you've not given your life to Christ, we invite you to come today. Because Calvary is proof that even though we have to deal with a dynamic called death, Calvary says there is victory over death and the grave through Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Come, come, come give your life to Christ today or maybe you you're in Christ and you're looking for a place to grow spiritually and get involved and connected. We're not a perfect church, but we're a church that strives to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. As the, as the praise team sings our invitation selection, we welcome you to come and unite with us by letter. If a letter cannot be obtained, we're working by way of Christian experience. Wherever you are today, begin your act reactivation process by giving your life to Christ. Maybe online, you may call 859-252-7191. Maybe you can reach us via our Facebook page or our website, fabclex.org, First African Baptist Church Facebook page. You can reach us. The invitation is being extended. Is there one today? the one.
what do you need to surrender to the Lord this morning? Give it to him. Let him, let him handle it. Let the church say amen. We give God some praise today. Amen. And before we exit, amen, we got a couple more things we need to do real briefly this morning. Amen. The first thing we want to do is we want to acknowledge our college students. Amen. This is our scholarship Sunday. Amen. Amen. We ask if, amen, you take a, a look on the screens behind us or in front of we can look that way. That way. Uh, amen. These are our college students who are uh, either in school already uh, or heading off to school. Amen. We are uh, so blessed to have them. We have a little uh, slideshow presentation. Amen. So you can see all of those individuals. Amen. And where they are majoring, where they're going to school, where they're majoring, Sister Madison Wales, amen. Senior, amen. <laughs> North Carolina A&T major in biology. Congratulations to the Wales family. Keep lifted in our prayer, amen and amen. Sister Lauren Owens Monday, amen. Junior, <laughs> Eastern Kentucky. Major is deaf and hard of hearing education. Amen. Uh, be that P through five, P through fifth grade. Amen. Amen. And if I'm wrong, amen, she can correct me later. Amen. And then we have one who is heading, leaving us. Amen. Starting off her freshman year, Sister Haven Strowman. Amen. We'll be going to Murray State, amen, majors, pre-veterinarian medicine, amen. So let's give all of our college students a hand. We want them to know that we are praying for them, amen, and, and stay encouraged, stay lifted. Your church family will be praying for you. We are here for you, amen. And again, uh, it's not much, but just a little something uh, that we'll be providing for you to help out a little bit uh, with your educational expenses. So thank you for all that you do to help us to do what we do to bless our students, amen. And so to God be the glory, so your special love offering today, or you can give online, amen, through our Giblify app. Uh, I don't give the fine. There is a bucket for scholarship. Amen. So we do want to recognize our scholars uh, uh, continue to be a blessing to our scholarship fund. So do that. Amen. We greatly appreciate it. Last but not least, amen, we have one to fellowship in today. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Brother Cameron, come on. Come on down front, my brother. Let's give him a hand today. Come on right here, my brother. Amen. Stand in front of us right here. Amen. This is our brother united with us in baptism. You know what we do. We like to give our new members a little something from us to them to let them know how much we appreciate them and how much we're looking forward to working with them. He is also a senior this year uh, at the University of Kentucky. Amen. Uh, major is in marketing and a minor in Spanish. And so, amen, we, we, we thank God for this brother uh, and his faithfulness. And again, we're going to keep you lifted in our prayers as well. We have a couple of things for you. One is a certificate of baptism that says this certifies that Cameron Moore was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on August the 14th, 2022 at First African Baptist Church, baptized by uh, your pastor, Pastor N.L. Moore. 
This also is a new member certificate certifying you completed new members class. This is also presented to you today as well, Brother Moore. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, on this August uh, the 14th, 2022. And then we also give our, uh, our baptismal candidates, those who you name with us by baptism, we give them a Bible from the church. Amen to you. Uh, praying that you will, uh, this will be a keepsake. It's also... Uh, not only would it be a keep safe, keep safe, but it'll keep you safe. Amen. Uh, stay in the word of God. May the word God guide you and direct you. My brother, I say to you, uh, here, give that to you. And my brother, welcome to the fellowship. Thank you. Right. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. All right. Praise God. I pray you've had a blessed worship experience. I have. Thank you again. Let's give God some praise for our music ministry here today. God bless you. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Let's be in prayer as we enter into Project Reactivation. The show must go on. Amen. Come on and receive this benediction here on today. God, how we thank you and we bless you for being a blessing unto us. We pray that the message of restoration blesses somebody here on today. You never cease to amaze me in how you uh, direct our thoughts and direct our minds. Our call to worship scripture today dealt with restoration. The God who is the shepherd of Israel, who we can call on to restore us. And how you anchored at home by sending us to a text that demonstrates that you are able to bring revival and new life. We thank you, God, that the show can and must go on. So as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, watch over us, lead us, and guide us to the glory of your name. Bless our college students as they are heading to school, some already at school, be with them from freshman to senior. Keep your hands on them. May they be productive in the classroom, and may they grow even in their social arrangement, involvement, and development. We thank you for this scholarship Sunday. We thank you also in advance for our Eastern Kentucky Relief Sunday coming up on next Sunday. May we continue to do, help us to do what we can to be a blessing in the people of compassion. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest from the bow with all of us henceforth now and forever. Let all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. We love you, we love you, and God loves you too. Have a blessed, blessed rest of the day and a blessed week. God bless. <laughs>